Okay, um, I will talk about uh, my theory and how it regards warp drive. For my theory, what happens is that it shows that if you separate enough electric charges, then you get warp drive. And warp drive is uh, generated by negative gravity and positive gravity. Um, I dislike it when people say you need negative mass and positive mass because this is not true. If you can have positive mass uh, but as another field in addition to the mass, in addition to the mass that, that, that it generates um, anti-gravity, that's enough. You don't need that the total, the total summation will, will have uh, negative mass. That's, it's, uh, it's absolutely incorrect. Uh, <clears throat> the problem is that you need a lot of, of charges to, to be separated. You need plus minus 20 coulombs at least to get the uh, physical thrust <coughs> and uh, at, I mean over one meter and uh, within one cubic meter. Um, if you do it on small capacitors with 37,000 volts then the amount of separated charge due to the low um, capaci capacitance will not manifest even um, 0.1 micronewtons. That means it's even not it's not even uh, measurable. The only thing you can get is like uh, maybe ionic wind if the, the capacitor is asymmetrical. Um, if it is an asymmetrical capacitor, then it may may, may have less than uh, one picofarads, and then the total accumulated uh, charges on the boards or whatever. Um, parts of the capacitors are, the accumulated charges will be so low that the, there won't be any measurable thrust in vacuum, absolutely almost nothing. It's not exactly nothing, it's not nothing, but it's not measurable, so for us as physicists it's nothing. Um, so we need another way to do that. And the problem is that if you try to separate, um, let's say, 20 Coulomb plus minus, or you want to build a spaceship, spaceship so you need something like uh, 10,000 Coulombs plus minus, then you can't do it with capacitors and with ordinary uh, charge separation. We need something much more clever than that. And one way is... Um, to go beyond the standard model, to go beyond the Dirac equation, and to go beyond um, QED, uh, quantum electrodynamics, and to think about a photon, or at least uh, a transition photon, it means that when it interacts with matter, or when it can be coupled with, like the photon can be coupled with an electron, do such trick that photons themselves will become like a pair of oscillating charges, maybe virtual charges. Um, it quite reminds of the wheel, yes, the wheel fermions that have charge but they don't have rest mass. So here we don't need even the wheel fermion, we only need um, the photons themselves will behave like two virtual charges. There are clues that uh, this thing actually exists um, from Hans Geertz from Sweden, <coughs> and we have to take him quite seriously. Another evidence is um, David Pares from Nebraska, his experiment. I do not agree with the experiment, with all the aspects of the experiment, because he used uh, uh, three poles, and we think that actually two poles are enough. We have to cause these uh, these uh, photons to behave like separated charges. So if you if we have a resonator in which we accumulated like 10 to the power 24 photons, so even if we have one percent of imbalance between these oscillating plus minus. That's enough.
because let's say that this is plus E minus E, that's in the E is the, the electron charge, so it's 1.6 to the power of um, 10 to minus 19, or multiplied by 10 to the power of 22, which is 24, 1% of it is 10 to the power of 22, then you have like plus minus <coughs> 100, 1,600 uh, coulombs, plus minus, so that's, that's enough to get a warp drive which is sufficient to drive a spaceship. So that's one thing, that there is a big question um, that probably its, its answer is positive, that photons can behave at certain conditions as pairs of oscillating <coughs> Uh, charges and this oscillation can become asymmetrical that means that you have behave, behavior like that you have plus above and minus below and then <coughs> you have um, a different distance when when this uh, wave oscillates um, <coughs> and there are, there is also a clue probably in drive um, there are attempts to explain M drive by molecular molecular explanations, but I'm not sure the molecular ex explanations are true. It's quite possible that what happens in M drive is um, is that there is an asymmetrical uh, distribution between these virtual charges that constitute either the photon or the interacting photon when it interacts with the reflectors. So it's more likely when it interacts with reflectors because the photon travels at the speed of light. But when it interacts, then you have transition states. And these transition, transition states, it's most likely that uh, we will be able to tip the balance between plus and, plus and minus. And if you have more plus in one side than on the other, then you get a warp drive, especially if it's a resonator. Um, box like in a tapered uh, cone that uh, <coughs> that was used in M drive. Another thing is uh, looking at David Perez uh, from Nebraska. It is warp drive. I'm looking at um, um, at the way that he succeeded to to control the laser beam, make it wider or narrower. So. When you succeed to control the width of a laser beam or the width of its uh, spreading, then that means that you actually create uh, generate gravity. <coughs> um, uh, David Perez uses radio waves. Problem with the invention of David Perez is obviously that he has no resonator, so most of the photons have just uh, dissipated out of the system. We need something more clever than that. Another thing that we would like to talk to is about uh, the possibility of magnetic motors. I personally believe that it's possible, but um, very, very strong magnets are needed and in a very special configuration, um, providing we have um, the same magnetic pole from two sides of two strong magnets and there is a motion of some quasi-particle uh, close to the speed of light in relation to the magnetic field close to the outer side of the of the, the cylinder of the cylinder that has a disk so close to the other to the outer side of the disk that's the disk you have something that moves close to the speed of light then what happens is that this particle will actually um, experience an enormous electric field and in this situation we can expect huge charge separation that is needed to, to create a warp drive and the interesting thing is that <coughs> if this thing works <coughs> um, is that the energy will be stolen from space-time because it will contract space-time. If you have a rotary warp, 
then what happens it will contract space-time that means that the far bodies of mass will become a little closer and you let you'll get energy on the expense of the gra gravitational energy that these uh, far bodies of mass lose and it quite aligns with the Denis Shiyama uh, inertial in induction or what is also known as Mach's, pri Mach's principle principle of Mach that you can take gravitational energy from from the cosmos and of course if this thing doesn't influence the distance between the earth and the sun or, this, or the distance between the, the earth and the moon if you have too many such machines then uh, this thing can be used to generate electricity the discussion now is uh, about uh, charge separation and the ensuing, uh, the ensuing technology which is warp drive the theory that I worked uh, in is about uh, geometric Hohnon uh, fields actually electrogravity via geometric Hohnon field and uh, the outcome is that if you separate a sufficient amount of charged particles then you generate warp drive and this can be either uh, used for uh, propulsion space propulsion or for energy ex extraction from space-time uh, where in the extraction from space-time what happens is you contract space-time drawing very far bodies of mass a little bit closer that means far stars become a little closer uh, lose gravitational energy and on their expense on the, on the expense of their gravitational energy we get rotary dynamic energy rotary uh, it's called the kinetic energy and um, this is a very important uh, way to extract energy from space-time providing that it does not influence the distance between the earth and the sun or the distance between the earth and the moon which is not very likely because if we change the, the metric of space-time then this, uh, inf the influence of this uh, extra, um, contraction of space-time will be spread all over space-time and will not, will not probably will not be concentrated in the near distance of the machine. Um, this can be done either with magnets, with very powerful magnets, and um, motion in relation to these magnets in in very high speeds. Um, close to the speed of light. Uh, it can be done by quasi-particles, um, particles that uh, are achieved by elementary particles uh, coupled with others. Um, and it can be achieved by causing photons uh, to behave asymmetrically in relation to um, uh, oscillating pairs of uh, virtual charges as Hans Geertz describes in his uh, in his experiment. The problem today is that uh, quantum electrodynamics and standard model um, does not acknowledge this behavior of uh, photons and uh, this behavior is expected when photons interact at least when they interact with electrons in transition states and these uh, photons can be viewed as pairs of plus minus e elementary charge um, and uh, if we can tip the balance we have say that when the uh, plus is above minus below and then when you have um, the, um, the opposite then what happens if we tip the balance um, then then that's enough that's this uh, sufficient effect to cause warp drive because it behaves as, as if we actually uh, uh, separate real real charges that means we don't have to separate electrons and protons we can even separate virtual charges to get warp drive and especially if we do that in a resonator if we can accumulate microwave or radio wave within a resonator and we have 10 to the power of 24 photons within this resonator and we tip the balance between plus, between plus and minus we just slightly tip the balance 
by 1%, then we have something like plus minus uh, 1,600 coulombs. And if you do that within a meter, it's, it's much, much more than enough uh, to drive a spaceship. In the last 18 months, uh, we have been trying to raise funds for this important experiment of electrogravity by charge separation. Uh, we intend to conduct two experiments. Uh, the first experiment is a proof of concept uh, to show thrust. We don't need more than thrust. Um, of course, uh, charge separation in, in picofarad capacitor is hopeless because you get less than uh, well, 0 0.1 uh, micronewtons. So it's not even measurable. So we need to get more than that. And, um, Fortunately, there are signs that uh, it's possible. Uh, we can get higher thrusts by uh, using radio waves or microwaves, and we can cause the photons as they interact with the reflector or with gas. We can cause them to behave as oscillating uh, virtual charges, and by by causing asymmet asymmetry in this oscillation. Uh, we can uh, cause an effect which is actually separation of virtual charges like if you have minus below and plus above in an, um, a polarized wave and we need a resonator in which we can accumulate uh, enough photons and get the thrust. Um, this thrust can be something very small, several micronewtons will be sufficient uh, for a proof of concept and we have to compare this effect in uh, two types of vacuum like in uh, 10 to the power of minus 6 tor and 10 to the power of minus 7 mm -hmm. tor but and show what we know now that if we accumulate enough or sufficient number of photons within a resonator and because this asymmetry of uh, the wave as these photons interact <clears throat> with other particles, let's say gas or reflector, then uh, this machine is equivalent to huge number of charge, uh, charge separations. It's like uh, thousands of plus minus coulomb. Like one, uh, 1,600 plus, 100 minus, and the total effect is of an electrogravitational warp drive engine. <coughs> This technology does not have to be used in aviation. If you put, uh, you install such a, an, an, an engine on on a rod which is connected to a, a rotating axis, then what happens is that <coughs> the rotation of the of the rod around the axis uh, will cause it to uh, to um, rotate a turbine. Um, Called it um, um, and generate uh, generate electricity. Um, it can also be used for uh, to driving air conditions, and, um, all sorts of uh, rotary uh, kinetic energy. Um, um, and this is actually the final um, um, application of this technology. Um, and on purpose, what, what I do now on purpose, I disregard the aviation uh, prospects or the space uh, travel prospects of this technology because it's much more difficult to get uh, licenses and approvals to use this uh, technology for aviation as it requires more as to, to meet more safety uh, regulations and, uh, and demands. Um, so more or less this is what we have to do. There are other ways to do this uh, thing. Uh, of course we can use also plasma and try to separate uh, real uh, charges, but that requires uh, high velocities in relation to um, strong magnetic fields. So naturally it's more difficult to achieve it that way. And, um, the experiments of David Paris <coughs> and of Hans Kirtz uh, are sufficient uh, to show us that there is a uh, way 
to achieve uh, virtual chart separation by higher voltage and, and, uh, and photons. And the disadvantage of the Geertz, of not the Geertz, of the David Ferris experiment is that David Ferris does not use resonance, so he doesn't uh, have enough photons per, um, uh, per volume uh, unit. And, and by this way, he cannot actually achieve uh, enough thrust. Another disadvantage in David Ferris uh, experiment is that he uses uh, uh, three poles instead of two poles of uh, electric field and my personal um, impression is that he doesn't really understand what happens in his uh, in experiment because he doesn't have the theory so he wasted a lot of time on trying to figure out what is the best configuration that this machine can work in and when you have the theory you have more uh, power <laughs> in doing uh, these things uh, correctly. I would like to speak about the, the theory, how it uh, contributes to the application, and uh, the need for raising funds for experiments. Uh, for two experiments, one experiment is a proof of concept, the other one is a practical machine. Um, we will prefer the, to use something that generates energy on aviation because aviation uh, will have to meet tough uh, regulations, tough demands from um, from the um, from the governments because it regards uh, human lives. <coughs> so one thing that we know is that uh, charged particles generate two fields uh, that are not expected by the standard model. Uh, one field is the geodesic motion prohibition field, it's actually an acceleration field. Electrons will manifest a field that attracts, not that does not repel, attracts. Uh, the gravity, the gravitational field that the electron generates is repulsive. That means it's the opposite in its direction to the acceleration field. Um, the total effect is attractive on, on rest mass, not on photons. If you talk about photons, then photons will be influenced by the entire gravity. But if we talk about material, it's called um, Dirac material, okay, Dirac material that can measure time, or clocks which are made of Dirac material, these clocks uh, will be um, affected mostly by the acceleration field and less by the repulsive gravitational field. That's, that means that the total effect will be attractive and not repulsive. And we can see that we can see that in the flyby anomaly of satellites that use uh, uh, the gravitation on the pull of the Earth as, in, as if in a slingshot to gain more energy. And there is a steady, constant uh, deviation from the expected results which can be explained by the magnetic field of the earth in regarding this the, in the regarding my theory that means that regarding my theory this satellite that that travels at high velocity in, in relation to the earth will see higher concentration of electrons in the earth core than of protons and because the satellite is far enough from this core the satellite will not experience internal polarization because this, this internal polar polarization will happen even in imperfect insulators like diamonds where are enough mobile um, charges within the, the, within, the, within the diamond such that this, the motion of the charges within the diamond uh, will cause um, an electric effect which is far stronger than any, any uh, attraction by the electrons which is not expected by the standard model which we call uh, the geodesic motion prohibition um, so when the, the body of mass is far enough from the the negative charges then what happens is that this effect will become stronger and stronger until uh, it will become what we know today as dark matter so this flyby anomaly is very important for uh, proving that the theory is correct. The prototype that uh, we need to build will probably be based, based on at least uh, three experiments. The first experiment 
uh, will be uh, photons, actual radio waves or uh, microwaves, photons in resonance within, within a box. And in this box we will accumulate a very high number of photons, uh, approximately, ten, approximately 10 to the power of 24 um, uh, uh, photons. And we would like to cause these photons to behave as pairs of charged uh, virtual particles, charged in, the ter in, in terms of uh, modern physics, like in Feynman's theory. And we can do that either by interacting, uh, causing the photons to interact with gas or with the, re or with the reflectors, such that there will be transition states. And uh, we don't uh, now expose more than that because we don't have a non-disclosure agreement with uh, any observer of this uh, video. Um, so this is one way to use uh, resonance and uh, other measurements in order to cause um, um, virtual charge separation of minus below and plus above. And we can achieve something like a uh, thousand or more, let's say 1,600 um, columns plus minus. That's enough for a spaceship. Another thing is that we would like to use plasma in high velocities in relation to a magnetic field and cause uh, charge separation within the plasma. Within the plasma. Um, another thing that uh, we would like to use is to, use to get thrust, and not a warp drive that. Uh, that encompasses the entire device because we don't need the uh, superluminous speeds in the first stage, we, de we just need uh, proof of concept. So it's enough to use even the motion of the quarks uh, within the nucleus such that under certain conditions of high magnetic fields and high velocities these quarks will uh, move to different directions. The minus and the plus quarks will move to different direction and cause microscopic uh, warp drive that will be quite strong and will be sufficient um, because of the speed which is close to the speed of flight of the quarks so this effect will be sufficient to drive a turbine and to produce electricity of course, this it's not free energy because what happens if you build such rotary warp drive, which is made of many little warp drives to the center of the turbine in the diagonal radius? Then what happens? The turbine contracts space time, and as such, what it happens is it, it it draws far bodies of mass a little bit closer, and these far bodies of mass lose gravitational energy and on the expense of their gravitational energy uh, we can get this uh, um, rotary kinetic energy of a turbine and produce electricity so more or less that's what we want to do we first want to develop a device that produces energy out of the vacuum it contracts the vacuum and uh, causes rotary kinetic energy to be extracted um, this product does not um, require a compliance with the TAF regulations of TAF or TAF aviation regulations. Um, the second product will be a um, thrust en engine, uh, probably for a disc shaped uh, spaceship, and uh, this will be probably the the leap that uh, mankind requires in order to get the password to the to the far stars, but uh, that's that will be only the second uh, phase. Uh, we have an advantage over existing uh, existing uh, technologies like uh, the Ildis motor because in the Ildis motor, due to our analysis, we expect that the magnets that the Ildis uh, uses will be will will break down due to what is called tidal forces. Of gravity, Hildes is not even aware of what happens within his uh, engine, and uh, more or less that's what we, we want to convey in this stage. We will now talk about uh, 
the practical uh, part of the theorem is publication. Publication was in uh, 2014, in the summer, in the um, journal of SDI network. In the name of the journal is uh, Physical Science International Journal. Um, the second publication was in, uh, in 2015, 19 of, uh, I think it's 19 of, uh, of June. And uh, the theory is based on um, geometric inter interpretation of Honon fields. Uh, the origin is uh, Sam Bakhnin's uh, theory from 1982 from his uh, doctorate dissertation in theoretical physics. And the, his approach is algebraic, my approach is uh, geometric. In uh, 2015, the publication included uh, the prediction of spinors without using spinors, uh, the prediction, prediction of SU2 uh, symmetry group, the prediction, prediction of SU3 symmetry group, the prediction of uh, U1 symmetry group, it's actually U1 cross SU2 cross SU3 without using the standard model, without using second quantization and particle swapping. Uh, it's totally based on Cronon field. There is further progress from the second published paper, which is the understanding of uh, Majorana fields as uh, the addition of, of two imaginary um, divergences that become zero. That means that Majorana field is not electromagnetic. It does not contain charges. Um, another thing is uh, very important. Uh, which is uh, some technical part that shows the conservation, uh, the, the, the vanishing of the divergence of uh, the tensor that I use. And uh, this is uh, important in order to prove that uh, the equations are actually valid. Um, <coughs> another thing is a full quantization of the Conon field. <coughs> the tau field is actually described as the summation of psi uh, functions which are, have wavelet properties. These psi functions are Hilbert um, um, orthogonal and um, they also normalize to one. Each uh, psi function has its energy concentrated in one place if we can call it energy because uh, it's not really energy. The, um, uh, the summation of the Honon field, the summation of Honon field is probability describes the probability density and where the Conon field will uh, transfer time and transfer physical existence because the Riemannian manifold exists only potentially and when this uh, Conon field uh, collapses it creates an event and this event is reality uh, particles are actually conceived as strings of, uh, of events it's an important approach and it consists with Stoke in uh, 2003 causal, th causal sets. There are also uh, papers of uh, Faye Doker from uh, Imperial College in London that uh, uh, adheres to this, uh, this method. So this is an important uh, step. And another step is the understanding of uh, Dirac monopole. Uh, Dirac monopole is conceived as the non-changing uh, sign of the acceleration um, matrix. There are two, actually two vectors that uh, define the acceleration matrix, but two vectors cannot uh, uniquely define a rotation and scaling matrix. So the addition of two, uh, two vectors align such that the sign doesn't change. And this is actually uh, a manifestation of Dirac monopole. Um, so theoretically, there were very important steps uh, since the last publication in the summer 2015. And the, the link that I give you is www.scripty.com slash Eitan underscore I-L, Eitan is with Y, E-Y-T-A-N underscore I-L, like the abbreviation of Israel. That's all.